Having covered the lenticulostriate branches, we can now focus on certain high yield branches of the PCA. Last time we uh, spoke about the PCA visual deficits, which is the homonymous hemianopsia. However, the PCA also supplies the midbrain, uh, as well as some cerebellar structures or cerebellar fibers in the midbrain. Uh, so now we can start talking about some of these midbrain syndromes. So to remember the midbrain syndromes, first of all, we're talking about the PCA perforators, um, including the paramedian branches. And so let's go ahead and again, just like the lenticulostriate with the basal ganglia, draw a little mini schematic. The midbrain strokes are a little bit more complicated. So this is going to be um, a more rough diagram. But basically, let's say this is our rough midbrain. Um, somewhere here we have our aqueduct. So this is our aqueduct of Sylvius. You have your periaqueductal gray. This area here is the tectum. Uh, around here you also have, now the midbrain is also a vertical structure, so I'm compressing all the slices of the midbrain into just basically one rough schematic to help remember uh, most of the importance here. Uh, you have your cranial nerve 3 here along with the fibers coming. Remember 3 and 4 are going to be, or 3, sorry, is going to be relatively uh, medial, while cranial nerve 4 might be a little more off to the side in the midbrain. Uh, next, we're also going to have our red nucleus here, uh, along with sort of the, this is going to be the peduncles where you have uh, your cortical spinal fibers again. So cortical spinal fibers, cortical spinal fibers, red nucleus, red nucleus. And then the last thing to remember is that you have these cerebellar fibers and the cerebellum is down here. Uh, but when you have these cerebellar fibers, uh, they tend to go sort of like this and up towards the thalamus. And now we can start talking about the various uh, midbrain stroke syndromes. And so the first one we're gonna talk about is Paranod's syndrome. And Paranod's is a lesion of the tectum, <coughs> excuse me. And the lesion of the tectum will cause a vertical gaze palsy. Uh, another issue that can um, present here is going to be sort of lid retraction. There's uh, a couple more high yield terms like uh, contraction, oh, sorry, convergence retraction nystagmus uh, that presents with Paranaut syndrome. Uh, the second one we're going to talk about is going to be Claude's syndrome. And Claude's syndrome is just going to be very similar to the third one we'll talk about, which will be Benedict. Uh, but Claude's syndrome is basically a lesion right here avoiding the red nucleus, but getting these cerebellar fibers along with uh, cranial nerve three. So the most important things here to uh, remember will be contralateral ataxia along with ipsilateral cranial nerve three palsy. And this is not just generally vertical gaze, it's cranial nerve three uh, could be one or multiple uh, muscles that it feeds. Now, Benedict's is going to involve all of these things. So ataxia from the cerebellar fibers, uh, ipsilateral three palsy. And then because the red nucleus is knocked out, you also lose some contralateral uh, motor and you will get these um, sort of, you know, violent hemibolism type uh, movements. <laughs> Choreoathetosis basically. And then the final one we're going to talk about is Weber. Uh, now, Weber syndrome is basically where the PCA, PCA is actually going to wrap around the midbrain like this, and it has these branches. So the paramedian branches are the ones that go here. These are the uh, ones that are knocked out for Benedict. Uh, however, if you instead damage the sort of uh, ventral portion of the midbrain, you would lose sort of cortical spinal tracts along with uh, potentially some cerebellar. So the most important thing here would be contralateral hemiparesis along with possibly some level of uh, cranial nerve 3 palsy 